Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season three. It's just, just the two of us today, Matt and Dave. Dave, it's been a, uh, it's been a while since we've done a podcast, oh, yeah. but uh, just good to be back. No, it does feel good to be back. I mean, like I said, we apologize. Our schedules are just crazy, especially this guy here. This guy's doing everything at once, man. You gotta shout out to Matthew Hicks, by the way. He's, no, shout uh, out to Dave Selfie too, nah, getting a job. Bro. Dave, you're back on the grind again. Of course, Tell I'm everyone. back on the grind. Yeah, work at BJ's now. I do um, recovery, so it's basically like a stock boy, but like so what, what I do is I basically whatever, like let's say, again, I'm going to use chocolates, but let's say you have a bag of chocolates or whatever, when when that box runs out, whatever's behind it, I'm supposed to bring that forward and then take the box, crush it up, throw it away, and uh, again, I also help people, like let's say an old lady needs help moving her groceries to her car, I basically help her out, mm-hmm. and it's, yeah, it's, again, it's yeah, very listen, easy. Listen, I've but, done, I've got plenty of experience. Yeah. Doing that, especially helping the old ladies out to the cars, helping them um, find their keys after they left them in the shopping car, <laughs> helping them. What is? I it? had one lady. Listen to this. I had one lady once. <clears throat> I mean, just she was completely shot. Right? She goes, "I have no idea how to turn my lights on in my car," and I'm like, "How old was she? Old, <laughs> very old." And I just was like, "Ma'am." You need to know, like, how to turn your lights off. Like, yeah, God forbid, Jesus. you know. It was, I remember it was the winter time. God forbid, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock rolls around. You know, it gets dark early. Yeah. And she, she's walk, she's going around with no lights on. Jesus, that's so scary. Yeah, that it is. is. Yeah. Some of, those, some of the people at Oliver's that shop, it's just like, you should not be shopping right now. Yeah. You should have, you know, some sort of assistance. Assistance. Yeah. Because, yeah, because typically the, the demographic of Oliver's and even my place is like 50 plus 40 right. 50 really for your even for bj's yeah even for bj's because oh, okay, wow. i feel like oh because the bj's we have the um we have the online shopping so like let's say you're, you're a younger guy you got stuff to do yep. you just do the online stuff someone shops for you you just come up pick your groceries or i think they could deliver it to you mm-hmm. so you could just do that i feel like that's honestly the next like the next big thing there because i feel like younger people just yeah a lot of a lot of stores have been doing that i know yeah. shop right they have their own separate department stop and shop i think stop and shop is the first one to really do because really? i remember I remember my parents did it for a little bit, bringing having the uh, groceries be delivered, and I mean it's smart, right? Yeah, no, it is because like people again, who are busy, exactly. they, have, they have jobs, they don't want to go out. I shopping. personally, I personally hate uh, shopping. I, I just cannot do it. I like it. I like getting out. Nah, sometimes. I mean it, it is fun, but like I uh, just well, well, it's not even fun. It gives me something to do. No, I just don't like just the, first of all the songs are just really boring, slow. You're walking around, everyone looks really mopey and like uh, you know, and you don't know who's gonna like pass out or like croak soon because again when everyone is very old there um you know it just it just it looks you're just, just talking about bj's no not bj's i'm talking about just stores in general like just like shopping in general even walmart anywhere every time I'm, i go over there it's usually older people who are just like just you know i, I feel bad and i'm like do you want me to shop for you well speaking about the grocery business oliver supermarket no longer oliver supermarket <sighs> got sold out unbelievable what, right what is the name end of an air well, it's still Oliver's. They're keeping it Oliver's for now, but it's Le- Le- Bonds. LeBond's is the store that that uh, bought it, and uh, I the it really was the first day of my vacation was yeah. was when that was when that bomb hit. Where I look over and there's just a there's a group of people that I just I didn't recognize, and I thought it was just like a yeah. Oliver's and LeBond's meeting because they're both independent yeah, yeah, yeah. grocery stores. So I thought they were gonna discuss business practices stuff like that how to how to help out in iga and then one of the nurses that works next to oliver's at the at the yeah, health I, center I really is like is that the, are those the new owners and i go what I go, what I'm like what new owners she's like she's like didn't the store get sold and i go oh not not, not that i know she goes oh well oh wow that's that's weird and then she left and then the cashier next to me told me it's like oh the news came out yesterday because i hadn't worked the two days prior so oh. she said yesterday they announced it at like one o'clock in the afternoon so that the store was bought and it just came out of nowhere like that it, it just, really just came out of the blue yeah, and i thought they would you know you'd hear some inner like rumblings nope. here and there hey, no gonna, they, they, they came up with an agreement they signed on it the next day we just knew that as soon as they had a verbal agreement to it that's when we knew and then the next day they came in and they bought the store wow that's uh so yeah it was a real quick turnaround yeah, and um out of nowhere dude Oh, it's been uh it's been it's been busy at the grocery store to say the least a lot of a lot of a lot of things going on. actually it used to be i used to dread doing the, the weekends because that's when the store's most busy 
But now I dread going on the weekdays because you have all the people from the bonds uh-huh. who are in there. They're trying to update all of because I mean let's be let's be real. Oliver's is it's overdue for an update. Like it's a, yeah. it needs a lot of upgrades as uh, far as how everything's run. So see, that's the thing. I, I like the classic look. It gives you know. I just no, but it keeps me at it's, home. You know, it's but it's good for business. Like they're trying to get the business well, stuff. That's true. So they're trying to they upgraded the time clocks and stuff. Uh-huh. How to do payroll? They have all the new systems for that. They're gonna start integrating their their software for the registers and stuff yeah. like that. So they'll have their stuff. They have a Levant's card, so people can use that. Okay. Have and then been, and then uh, they have a new inventory system that they have. And this is all brand new technology. Oh wow! Like this is crazy. This is just how how old Oliver's is. All the managers got a Levant's email. And for some of the managers, this is the first email they've had their entire lives. Oh my god. Gee, sounds like a uh, like ancient they, like it's crazy medieval castle right there. I know. Holy cow. They just Oliver's has just been the same for so long, yeah. and now it's it's gonna it's gonna have it's gonna be different, man. So it's gonna be a lot of change. See and, now, um, I was gonna ask you before. Are there you know, like have there been any changes so far that I just like you've kind of well you don't the, like? Well, no, but honestly, there's nothing I don't like. It's just it's modernized, right? Right. It's just very difficult for all the managers and and us the employees because we are we are taught one thing the entire yeah. time in the bonds they come in and they're like oh this is how we do it so well, i'm just trying to be personally i'm just trying to stay as open as possible yeah for change and um whatever they ask me to do i'm gonna just try to do it the best i can and just learn that way and wow yeah. hopefully it's for better but like i said it's just a lot of change and change is tough well yeah, that's true especially for yeah for me, anyway, so it takes me. I don't. I don't like change like that. I don't know. Obviously, gradually you have to get used to it. You know, right. that, that's how it works. And, it, and they didn't just like they won. Like, okay, change everything you do. You know, yeah. you have to be follow the Laban's code. They're like, just continue to do what you do, and I think a gradual change. And yeah, eventually we'll 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 get used to it. The big the big uh, change this week is the flyer. Is is different. We no longer have our Oliver's flyer. Oh, it's we're a, talking it's, about that. The it's other a Laban's day. flyer, right? And the bonds, they are against putting the flyer in the newspaper. Oh. So we are getting just a ridiculous amount of people yep. calling the store. Where's my flyer? I'm like, the flyer's not there. So what I did was I made a, like a step-by-step list of how to access it on the Internet because that's what they have to do now. They have to access it on the Internet. And that's uh, gonna be tough. It's, it's tough, yeah, especially it's, for the elderly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because Again, you know, that, that's kind of why I'm kind of really uh, taken aback by the change. Because you'd think, all right, it's it's an older demographic. They don't, they don't, I mean, you want to get the new people in, but the, right. the younger people in, but at the same time too, the demographic for these kinds of stores are well. If you think elderly. about it, the demographic right now is old. Is that sustainable? Well, that's that's the thing. No, I, that, that's why I'm weighing the good and bad here. Because like at the same time, they're gonna they're gonna be here for. Uh, I don't mean to say, it, but not. I don't mean to right. be a, so, you know, I mean, a bad guy. But it's not, that not long. A, it's not a sustainable business plan. Yeah. And this Lebon's is a big mart. It's a big. Uh, it's a chain now. Really, yeah. they have. I think. I think this is their fourth store. Oh wow! So yeah, they're they're kind of a big change. They want they're here for the long run. And I'll just say this: the owner right now. This is the second generation of Lebon's owners, uh-huh. and the third one, Rob. He's. Like in his, I'd say probably 30s, 40s. So it's good now that uh, there's, you know, the lifespan of Oliver's will will live on. Obviously, there'll be different, different, brand. different name, different brand, but the store <sighs> itself will still be there. So I, I just, I, I, the name Lebon's is just kind of intimidating to me. I just, yeah, it's Oliver's. It just sounds, you know, peaceful. Right. I'm gonna go shop at Oliver's. <laughs> me and the gals, like I'm an old person. Me and the gals are gonna go shop at Oliver's. We're gonna do some shopping here and there. And then we're gonna go off for some nah, tea nah, later. Exactly. That's right. like Le Bon's, bro. I, 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 I'll get used to it eventually, but like for now, you know. Just, everyone will. Yeah. Everyone will eventually get used to it. Change is difficult, but it is. It is. It's gotta you be. Know. Gotta be open to it. Exactly. Speaking about endings, I'm just going to uh, going to drop some bad news. Yeah. Our uh, some tragic news really this week. My boy Neil Pierre. Yeah, from Rush. Our hero, man. Yep. My, yeah. Uh, My if, you, hero. if you don't know, if you don't know, Neil Pierre, the drummer of the the famous Canadian band Rush, passed away. Really an influence, I mean, to so many people. I would talk to one of my friends at, at work, and, you know, he he's just like you and I. The reason why we picked up the drums was because of Neil Pierre. Yeah, he yeah. influenced us and uh, was really the – was just the god, man. Like, he was the upper tier. Oh, yeah. He was the alpha. Everyone – there's Neil Pierre, and then there's everyone else. every other drummer. Yeah, at least, exactly. in, at least in my mind. Well, me personally though, I because I, I feel like um, John 
the, the John Bonham. John Bonham yeah. was up there well, too. But like, yeah, no, Neil Peart kind of set the standard for like in terms of like progressive and like always oh, cool and implementing different types of you know uh, like rhythms on the drums and right. all that stuff. He kind of was the pioneer of that almost, you know, or basically was. Well, but like this is this is just my opinion. I didn't really listen to John Bonham. That was, like, that's true. Maybe last year. Oh yeah, to be no, honest that, with that, you. I've, I've no, listened that, to Zeppelin before, but that's I didn't fair. That's fair. Really appreciate his work. Neil Peart, when I was a little kid, I remember my dad put on the old DVDs and we'd watch, we'd watch him, we'd watch his drum set rotate during the drum solos. You got to see them before. Oh, it's not fair, dude. Oh, that was that bump. Well, I'm just saying, like when I was a little kid, we just had the little DVDs and we would, I would watch that and I was like, oh my god, this is what I want to like. This is what I want to be. I want to be like this guy and I want to have a drum set just like that one day. And he was kind of like, I mean, he was everything for me. He's the reason why I picked up. Picked up drumsticks in the first place and same and started I, going. Yeah, the first time I heard Rush really, because I mean, again, I, honestly, I have to I have to thank my neighbor, Mister uh, Windows. He was the one who kind of got <laughs> me into. Yeah, he kind of because I mean, he had the he had the big radio outside right. and he blasting. I'll be outside out here. And I'm like, wow, sounds good. So anyway, so one day I, I helped him out with his um with his pool stuff or whatever, and he was like, all right, my treat. I want to take you guys out to uh, Texas Roadhouse. All right, you know, nice, we get there, nice, go that nice. yeah, good place. Uh, we're coming home. I hear Spirit of the Radio. I was like, what is this? And he's like, oh, it's a Spirit of the Radio by Rush. I'm like, this is insane. So I go home. I you know, sit down. I type it on YouTube. And I keep finding all these cool songs. Free Will, um, Lamlight, Tom Sawyer. I was like, this is, this is insane. There's nothing, there's nothing better when you find a, find a new band. Uh, it's, uh, you listen to that first song, and then you're like, it's like a rush. Nowadays, nowadays, what I do is I go on Spotify. I listen to like the most popular song. Yeah. And then I'll listen to like the second song, and then I'll listen to like an entire album, and you just, it just, it's just that is just the best feeling. Oh, I'm opinion. telling when you, when you're man. finding new music and you get influenced by that. Exactly. That's the best. It, it's like an adri- it's an like adrenaline rush, man. Honestly, it, I I love it. But anyway, so yeah, I did. I went home. I you know I was looking at all that stuff. I went on YouTube again. I was looking for um the drummer. I was cr- trying to find who he was. I tapped it up for a drummer for Rush. Neil Pierre, I was like, this guy looks pretty cool. So I go on there, I watched a bunch of videos of him drumming, and I'm like, I'm, my mouth was just like wide open. I was like, this is this is this is insane, man. This guy is just doing everything at once. Yep. I was just blown away. And then all the other like, you know, adding the other stuff to the drums that you know traditionally don't add, like the the cowbells, the the whatever. I don't remember. I mean, the names he had them. the coolest drum set. Yeah, no one would ever top that. And Nothing will. Yeah. Nah, I mean, we all. I mean, uh, that's just the drum set everyone wanted. Exactly. He was the. I mean, he was just. He was the professor. That was his nickname. He's a professor, man. He he, he teach, man. Yeah, it's just really just sad to see him go, man. Yeah, I mean, no. he was just absolutely the best. Horrible news. And the way he died too. It wasn't like oh, you know, I just kind of yeah, brain out. cancer. Yeah, brain cancer. That was I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't know he had brain cancer. I knew he had. Right. So the uh, the band said the reason why he had retired. I think maybe two years ago was because of arthritis oh so that's what so, i thought it which, was which yeah. which, which made, makes sense yeah, yeah he exactly. plays the drums really hard and you know he's getting older arthritis yeah. yep. it, it gets to you but no one knew i mean he was neil was a very reserved guy he didn't really say much especially during beat alongs he wouldn't even go out and say to the fans it was always getty and alex those would be the two ones that would go out there and talk to the fans neil was always Kind of reserved in his own place, probably reading a book, doing yeah, something. Yeah, he was, a, yeah, he was a bookworm. That, that's why all of his songs. I, I, another thing. Yeah, I another thing about too, him was he was the lyricist. Yeah, I didn't. Well. I didn't realize that. I thought it was Getty or Lee. I didn't realize it was. Um, no, th- what happened was, Neil was, I think, the last one of, th- of the three to join the band. Yeah. So, Getty and Alex had been writing the songs before that, and then Neil came in. And he was just a really educated guy, and he was. You could tell too, because yep. like if you listen to your past stuff. Uh, I don't remember what the name of the album, but uh, this uh, Working Man. Listen, I mean, it, not a, I'm not saying it's a bad song, you know, you know but it, I think it was just dumb. It was Alex, um, uh, Getty, and then the, the other drummer, some other drummer. You could tell, like, the quality of, like, the lyrics of, like, how it, it wasn't, and like, then you as listen, intelligent And then you as, listen to a song like Free Will. Yeah. Where it's, and like, Lamlight. very deep uh, philosophical exactly. questions that he's bringing up. Uh, it It is a very unique kind of exactly. nerdy in a way but that's why we like it. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's kind of why uh, it's, it's yeah, interesting it's i remember one time i'm writing an english paper um and it was about 
that. Yeah, he and told I me. literally just copied word for word <laughs> what Neil put down. Yeah. And I remember uh, my teacher was like, oh, this is really good stuff, <laughs> man. You know, good job. I was like, thank you, Neil Pierre. <laughs> so I can thank him for that. I can thank him for that A that I got on that paper. Yeah. When we talked about free will, stuff like that. Um, yeah, just the best. Yeah, Sad man. to see him go. It really, and, uh, really it. Looking like it, back, yeah. I'm just really, really fortunate that I was able to see him when I did back in <sighs> – Back in Bridgeport, you weren't even in the I stage at the time. No, wait, when was it? What year was that? I think I was in seventh grade, and it was it was the beginning of seventh grade. Yeah, I wasn't in the states, but I was probably prepping I my was, way. I think it was in October or something like that. I remember. Yeah, I was probably prepping. It was me, coming. me, my friend Chris, my dad, and we all we oh, went, and it was. Oh, dude, I, I, that that's honestly why I've not taken this news like kind of uh, lightly this whole week. Him, I never got to see him. I've, yeah. I honestly, I've, I was really sad this whole since. Apparently, he died on Tuesday, last Tuesday. Yeah, that's, that's a crazy thing. And it right? came he on Thursday. On, and it came on Thursday, right. But anyways, when I heard it on Thursday, I was like, I just, I've just been sad. Even until today, I'm just really like, you know, I never got to see them play. I just, you know, one of my favorite bands, I, you know, ever of all time, you know, they influenced me and like basically my music and everything, and I never got to see them. So that's been, that bummed me out a lot. Um, yeah, man, honestly. Oh, another thing too, with his... Um, he had a very like tragic. Uh, not yeah, tragic his one. life stunk, dude. Yeah, because his wife died, his daughter died. Was it? Oh, and died I, from, uh, what did they die from? I don't remember. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd have to look that up. But I know that both of them died, and he was very, very depressed for a long time. Yeah, obviously, dude. as as anyone would going through that. And he he loved his motorcycle. So what he did was he kind of just he went on his motorcycle and he he took an entire trip of North America on his mm-hmm. motorcycle and he he kind of just went. It was went around and tried to really find his place in the world. He didn't really know where he was at the time and you know found found peace apparently during that time and you, yeah, you have came back of. to the band and, and played drums for a little bit longer and then you know unfortunately arthritis and yeah. arthritis, brain cancer, yeah. it all it all came to a to an end. I mean, he died pretty young, t- relatively young too. Sixty-seven, right? Sixty-seven. That's, yeah. yeah, that's pretty young. That's pretty young, man. That's. I mean, in terms of rock star years, that's very, very good. Yeah, because, compared to other guys. Yeah, because some of these guys are. Di- yeah, right? yeah, you're down like twenty, twenty-four. Rush 22. was Rush, Rush was never one of those bands that. That's that's, that's, that's the crazy thing. Like, there's guys like Keith Richards, guys who did like Acid. Who are still alive? Ozzy, Ozzy's still alive. How? Eddie Van Halen, he's barely alive. Oh, yeah. He's very sick too, unfortunately. When was the last time they toured uh, Van Halen? Uh, I went. I saw them. I think like three years ago. He's got. Uh, he's got throat cancer too. Oh, you know what it's from? Craziest thing. The guy smoked his entire life. It's from the metal picks that you put in his mouth when he would do like eruption and stuff. Really? They had metal picks so he can get the high pinch harmonics. Yeah. He put the metal picks in his mouth, and that's the reason why he's got mouth oh cancer. Oh, my. So all that smoking. So all that the, smoking. Yeah. Nothing. Is, yeah, it was the metal picks that wow. got him. Wow. That sucks. I'd be pissed. I'd be really upset. But going back to what I was saying earlier, yeah. out of all the guys to die, like Neil Pierre. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't expecting it. It just came out of nowhere, dude. I mean, these guys were like – they were the nerdy guys, exactly. right? They were the guys that like – I don't know. Yeah, they, weren't, they weren't. They weren't the. They weren't the Motley Crues exactly. or the Ozzy's or, you know, the crazy bands from out in California. There's just some three dudes up from from Canada. from Canada who, who wrote these long ballads, twenty minutes, yeah. and they were two, two, one, they one, played two, in. Yeah. They played in like a million different time keys. Yeah. And, I mean, they were the, they were they were awesome, man. And it's it's uh, <sighs> sad to see him go. It really, really is. Again, uh, you, I'm I'm uh. I'm really jealous you got to see him, but like at the same time too, it's just you know, it's timing. You know, the timing just, wasn't right. And you gotta just thank them for, yeah. for what they did. Yeah, honestly, and it's just because uh, uh, I'd really be bummed out, man. Just, I know. I just, it's uh, it's tough. And you really know what else is. is tough? School's coming back. Oh, what the heck, Dave? Oh, dude, it's right, well, down, it's right around the corner. Yeah. For, when do you when do you start? Tuesday. Twenty second. Yeah. Yeah. You start. So you start once. I start that Tuesday right after. Martin Luther King Day. Well, how's the uh, how's the uh, semester lining up for you, Dave? Looking good or uh, what's going on? Pretty pretty decent. Um, I, I think I have classes. I think I have classes on uh wait I no, I don't remember my schedule, but it's like a, I think it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday type deal. Well, that's awesome. So, so well, you're maybe in great shape. Yeah, I I don't know. I have to I have to go check again, but I don't remember. I didn't memorize it. But um, yeah, dude, I just. Uh, it flew by too fast, dude. Honestly. Yeah, the break went by. You came in one and. It always does, just because the holiday season's right around the corner. Yeah, so that's true. You're prepping for that. You're trying to get gifts, and 
I'm always busy at the grocery store because that's our busiest time, yeah. obviously, but coming with the holidays. So I don't really get to see a lot of people till after the holiday. And by the time the holiday's over, you know, it's yeah. everyone you know, is usually one, back. two yeah. weeks and then they're then they're on and off. Yeah, it always goes it always goes by so fast. Uh, but but the semesters all. go even faster somehow. That's so true. That's before you know true. it, we'll have you know, T-shirts and shorts on going to the beach. That's what I'm looking forward to, really. Yeah. I think you said last time we saw, and this is like your one of your last summers you before you start doing and getting internships and stuff. Yeah, like so that. I'm trying to like just enjoy, just trying to enjoy it as much as I can yeah. until you know the it's real work real, starts. Yeah. You know? Oh God, I'm not looking forward to that at all. But this semester, I'm actually kind of looking forward to. It's you know I you know I've mentioned I don't know if I mentioned this in the podcast. I changed my major to communications. So I'm doing a lot more stuff like this uh, in school. And this semester, I have a really cool writing course. It's a script writing course for like writing movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So stuff we like are making a movie. Oh, we, yeah, we'll definitely make a movie. We're going to put it on the YouTube channel. It's going to be Eventually. the greatest movie of all time. Yeah, but I'm really looking forward to that one. And then we're doing a lot of – I'm doing a lot of um, television broadcast okay. uh, production, stuff like that, which I'm really, really looking forward to. So uh, it should be I'm, – I'm really looking forward to this semester. But – Obviously, that being said, it's you got school, you got work, you got the other things you got to I got to do on yeah. the outside. So it's always busy. Yep. Um, sleep will be at a very minimum, but at the very least, you know, that, I'm doing a, something. You know what I mean? That's, that's the out thing. Trouble. That's the thing I don't like about. I I honestly do not mind school. I just the sleep. I I I like the sleep. I don't I don't like waking up in the morning. Well, I like and, ha- and I also like having days like today, which is yeah. Tuesday, like. I would have to go to, to Southern and then do homework and then come home and go to work. And then before you know it, yeah, it's 7, 8 o'clock. The day's over. Yep. Going I like bed. days like today on a like a lazy Tuesday. Woke up, went to Starbucks, got a coffee, kind of just Starbucks. Like, yeah, you know, just try to waste time. I kind of like doing that. It's, it's relaxing, but. I don't see you as a Starbucks guy. I thought you were more of a. I'm, I'm kind of getting into the Starbucks really? thing now. Yeah, I've got their, uh, their Pike's Place roast. It's kind of. It's a very strong, strong taste. Okay. But um, it's coffee, basically, right? yeah, it's yeah. a very strong coffee. It almost tastes like a, uh, like an espresso. Like that's how powerful it is. Oh but, boy, yeah. Um, I just can't drink Dunkin' Donuts anymore. Really? That Dunkin' Donuts down by the Sturbridge in Seymour. Yeah, Seymour. Yeah. Awful. Really? Burnt, awful coffee. It tastes like pee water. Oh. Well, I mean, I've never. Uh, I'm you're not. not really, you're not a coffee. Yeah, I don't. Guy, right? I don't drink coffee. I don't. I never. I just never got the taste. I just. I I tried it before. I just it didn't click with me. You well, know. It really was came from necessity for me, just because. Yeah, you're, you know, I had to go to school yeah. and work, and I'm waking up at crack of dawn to get to work for seven thirty, eight o'clock, and then I had classes in the afternoon, and before you know, I want to get home till eight, so I needed something to kind of yeah, keep does me that, going, that, and I started off by just drinking like diet soda and stuff, and I felt awful like, like the second third month you know i my teeth were i was getting a ton of cavities yeah. uh, i just didn't feel good so i started drinking coffee yeah. in the morning and i'm addicted now man Wait, it's does it's it bad. Actually, does it actually give you like the uh, oh, yeah. um, the energy and I, all that stuff it has gotten to the point now unfortunately where if i don't drink it i'm completely so just like sorts. everyone yeah just like every adult or every like other person that, yeah, it's, yeah it, like yesterday i woke up fairly late and i went out and got lunch so i really didn't drink co- i didn't drink any coffee in the morning yeah. and i you could just tell i was making stupid mistakes like i went out the house i went to go fill up my gas tank i left my wallet at home oh. so i had to close the car and grab, oh, that's the worst. grab my wallet and and go all the way back home i was just making stupid i called uh my new boss rob i called him ryan or something like that like, what the I hell was just making these like did? goofy, goofy what mistakes, and I think it's yeah. just because I didn't have my coffee in the morning. I'm, I'm actually because I because I also I also sometimes in, during the day I just run out of energy, so I may have to try well not coffee. I may have to try like a five hour energy drink or some some kind of caffeine something. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's better well, for you. Okay, well, what other caffeine products are out there that are not coffee? Because t- taste of coffee is just not for me. You just can't you can't handle it. I, I just I, it doesn't taste do, right. Well, it's an adjusted taste, really. It's like, it's like anything, really. Right, just gotta have to get used to it. I started with cream, half cream, half sugar, then a little bit of coffee, and then I 
like eventually I yeah, remove the sugar because the sugar is not good for you. No, it's not. So then it's just cream, and now I'm kind of just like black coffee. Is that what you? Not black coffee, oh, I but I just say, do like I do a little bro. I do a little dab of cream, and that's, all right, that's enough. For is me. the cream for I don't you know I'm not a coffee guy. So okay. does it have sugar in it? No. Or just well, I do half and cream. half, so it's cream and milk. Uh, what is it? I had the other day. It was like some hazel. Oh, or something. was it? Uh, oh, you must have had coffee, mate. Is that what it is? That's probably it. Coffee mate is yeah, it's it's garbage. Really? It's, it's absolute garbage. Wow. It's just artificial gunk that they make into like a creamy, sugary goodness. That's what uh, that's what Mr. Noble drinks. It's a very he has like a very potent taste to it. Like it's really? it's really really strong. And I'm like, oh man, I can't drink that. <laughs> well, you can, but it, it tastes like candy. Yeah, no, no, I would get sick. Really, because uh-huh. really, yeah, it is, I, it's not good. For I don't me know either. why, but like, I feel like the older I get, like, let's say I have more than five things of candy. You're done. Nope, I'm I'm out, dude. Yeah, I can't I, do it anymore. I it's, spe- it's tough, especially during the holidays. Uh, oh, stay away from it. That and Halloween, because like, oh, Halloween's the worst. Well, yeah, my brother I don't go trick or treat anymore, but my brother, you know, I force him to go and get Kelvin stuff. still goes trick or treat. Well, no, I don't. No, after this year, I think he's done. <laughs> I hope so. I, I hope no, because I see you in high school. Yeah, well, I, actually, a, I think now that I think about it. I think I stopped doing trick or treating from like seventh grade to my sophomore year of high school. Really? Then I did it again my junior year. I well, I I, I did it up to my senior because I just I mean I wasn't um, doing it well, well yeah because it was kind of awkward. But I'd go there trick or treat and you're like, are, aren't you too old for the candy? Yeah. I'm like, but yeah, I'm only like yeah, seventeen I, though, so I mean, that's it's, still, I, it's still that's good. How I, that's why I stopped the, yeah. in seventh grade was just because people were kind of like looking at me and they'd only give me like a little bit of candy. Yeah. A little bit of candy. Well, I got to I gotta find another like person I could kind of get candy off of like because I, I, I do like the candy. What I do is when Oliver's doesn't sell all their Halloween candy, they put it at half price the next day. Oh. So I just... yeah, what am I saying? I, I'm going to be working at a grocery store anyway, so I'll just kind of oh, Especially just... BJ's. Too. Yeah. You I could just... just buy one of those big bags. Yeah. They'll probably mark it down and you got your discount too. For yeah. Yeah. Your... For BJ's, you probably yep. get it seventy percent off. It's gonna be game. So away. I mean, that'll be. I'm gonna be getting. I'm probably gonna get have diabetes. So it's yeah, gonna be maybe. honest. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's that's gonna be fun. But um, yeah, man. Yeah, a lot to look forward to. Well, well, obviously, yeah. we just talked about tragic news with our boy Neil Pierre. Yeah. So you know, New Oliver's year, yeah. Oliver's making a lot of changes over there too. So it's gonna be a lot different. It's gonna be a new decade. Yep. So wow, I can't believe I already flew yeah. by like that. Boom, done. 2020. Wow. 2020 vision, Dave. Dude, I wasn't even I wasn't even in this country like for most Last of this decade. decade. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. Here we go. This is gonna be your first full decade yeah. in America. I I feel hopefully. About that. Hopefully I don't move anywhere else. But uh yeah, no, it's gonna be uh you know, hopefully uh, I mean I'm gonna try to make the best out of my uh my life here, you know. Yeah. Get chase the American dream as as they say, you know. Right. Um you know, I'm just get better as I try to get better as a person, you know, just improve on things like I'm not really good at. Uh, get better at drumming. Obviously, we're uh still in the band. Try to yeah. try to get that going. Hopefully, we get get the podcast going get again. The podcast going, which brings us up my next point. If you want to come on the podcast, please hit us up at any time. Please we'll try to we'll try to make it work. We can do Skype call. We can do we can go to your house. You can come to our house. We don't care. We'll yeah. do anything. So actually, yeah, Skype because I feel like a lot of people. I, I forgot we had. To, I honestly forgot all about the Skype we have on here. Yeah, it's clutch. So, yeah, so we should try to uh, try to get the Skype things going because I feel like it's really difficult, especially when people are in schools and whatnot. Right. It's gonna be harder. So I feel like we just hey get Skype on here, Boom. and then next thing you know Boom. we're done. You're on the Hixie Nana podcast, exactly. the most popular podcast of all time on Kaylee's Way here in Beacon Falls, <laughs> Connecticut. Probably the only podcast. In so Beacon that'll wrap things up for today. See you next time. Um, enjoy, enjoy the. Next- Enjoy the new semester. Enjoy the new year. Yes. See ya. Peace out. Peace.